All right, the plan for this week. Guys, I need you to stop talking, please. The plan for this week, we're going to do this section of completing the square. Tomorrow, you need to come in with questions from your web assign, and I'm also going to give you questions to work on for the quiz review. Wednesday, we'll review a little bit. We have shortened classes because it's mass, and then Thursday is our quiz, okay? Again, there's nine questions. I'll write it on here so you can see. Nine questions that say solve. That means you solve, if it's irrational, you get a common denominator. That means if you can factor it, you factor it. That means if you solve by taking the square root of each side, you do that. If it's a linear equation, you just distribute everything you need to and solve. Then there's gonna be one that says you have to solve by completing the square. So there's nine that you do any of the methods we have talked about. There's one that's going to say you have to solve by completing the square. If you do not show, hold on, Vito. If you do not show your work, if you do it a different method, you're not getting credit. You have to demonstrate that you know how to solve by completing the square. Make sure you guys understand that. Yes, sir. When do we have to ask again? Wednesday. Mm -hmm. All right. Completing the square. This is how you do it. I know you guys are not going to read through this and understand it, so we're going to do a bunch of practice problems. But you're going to keep your AX squared, and you're going to keep the BX, your A term and your B term. You're going to move the constant to the other side. And then what we're going to do is create a perfect square trinomial on the left-hand side that will then lead us to be able to solve. Once we get past the first step of, quote-unquote, completing the square, it just becomes a problem that we did on Friday where you take the square to both sides and all that. So let's just do some examples. Now... I'm going to show you how this all works with the first example, and then I'm not going to work the whole thing out like that anymore. I'm just going to do just the process. But when you have a question, now this is completing the square, but if you had this and it just said solve, what would be the first thing you should try to do? You have a quadratic with an X term. So what's the first thing you should try to do? You should try to factor it. You should try to find the GCF and do all that. The reason we use completing the square is because things don't factor. Another thing you could do is the quadratic formula, but we haven't quote unquote learned that yet, so you can't do that on your quiz. That's the next section we're gonna do before your test. So this doesn't factor. There's nothing else you can do other than the quadratic formula or completing the square. Quadratic formula is off the table right now. So we're going to complete the square, and this is how you do it. The first thing we do, my A term is one, correct? The number in front of X squared. So we're going to move negative 14 to the other side of the equation. So when I move negative 14 to the other side, what does it become? Positive. Okay, we're adding 14 to both sides. So watch, I'm going to write x squared minus 4x. Then I'm going to say plus, I'm going to put a big square. Then I have my equal sign. And what's 0 plus 14? 14. And then I'm going to put plus a big square. Because what you do to one side of the equation, you do where? To the other. Okay. That's the first step in completing the square. If A is 1, you just move the constant over. <clears throat> Set this up. Now, you take your B term. What is your B term? Negative 4. I'm going to take negative 4 and divide it by 2. And what do I get? Negative 2, okay? Take your B term, divide by 2, you get negative 2. Now I'm going to square it. What's negative 2 squared? 4. That's what goes in your square. You've completed the square now. What you do to one side, you do where? To the other. Okay? Now, what you have done, I'm going to do a little side work over here. Right here, guys, look. You have created a perfect square trinomial. x squared minus 4x plus 4. If I'm going to factor that, what times what gives you a positive 4 when I multiply, but a negative 4 when I add? x minus 2 and x minus 2. Every time you complete the square, you will create a perfect square trinomial. I just wanted to show you that that's what happened. So what you're going to have over here is your binomial. How do I write x minus 2 times x minus 2? What's another way I can write it? x minus 2 squared, which is exactly what we have here, right? Equals, what's 14 plus 4? 18. Now we have the problem that we did on Friday. 
We're going to practice completing the square. After I do this a couple times, you guys are going to be like, oh, okay, this isn't bad. It's pretty simple. <clears throat> How do I go about solving this? We're going to take the square root of both sides, right? So x minus 2. I heard you, bud. Plus minus. I love that you said plus or minus. If you guys forget that plus or minus, you're forgetting half of your answer. That's a big deal. And then my next step is to do what? Add 2. I like to put the number in front of the plus or minus. You guys can do what you want. So 2 plus or minus the square root of 18. And we absolutely have to do what every time? No, I didn't. I, I meant to put an equal. It, my oh. pen died. <laughs> my pen. My pen is not cooperating with me today. My other one's in my on my kitchen table. What do I have to do right now? Can I leave it like that? No. Why not? Eighteen. What is eighteen the same as? Nine times two. So the square root of nine is. So my answer is x equals two, plus or minus what? Three square root of two. Now, guys, the reason you use completing the square is because this quadratic doesn't do what? Doesn't factor. So if you get to a problem from now on where something doesn't factor, your two options are completing the square or the quadratic formula. Some of you are going to always go with the quadratic formula because you like it better. Some of you are always going to go with completing the square. It's fine. But the one question on the quiz that says solve by, you have to, God bless you, do it that way. Okay, we're going to do a bunch of these. Let's look at number two. Question, you are? Okay. <clears throat> Check your A term. Is your A term one? Good. So what do I do with my constant? First step. I'm going to move it over to add one. So I have x squared plus 6x plus a big what? Square equals one plus a big what? Square. What you do to one side, you do to the other. Somebody asked, is this always a plus sign? What's, what's the answer to that? Yes. yes, how come? Because is it oh, is that number always going to be a minus? No. Is your average square than every time you square something? Like when you square, look, what do we do with this number? We square it, right? So if you square a number, it's always going to be positive. So that's, when you put plus a box, it's always going to be plus the square. So how do we figure out what my binomial is on the left-hand side? You take your B term, 6, and divide it by 2. What is 6 divided by 2? 3. So what does your binomial here say? X what? Why is it plus 3? Yep, <laughs> because 6 is originally positive, and this is squared. Yes, ma'am? Always, 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 always. You're always going to do the exact same thing. So now we square this. What is 3 squared? Nine. So what goes in that square goes in which one? Yeah. The other one. Always. So guys, what is one plus nine? Ten. Ten. Here's a problem we did when. Did we do this on Friday? Yep. These are the problems we did on Friday. You have a binomial squared equals a number. So what can I do to both sides? Square. Take the square root. When you guys put the square root on, what goes in front of your answer? Plus or minus, good. Do not forget that. And then what's your last step? We want to get x by itself. Minus, minus 3, perfect. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 10. If you want to write plus minus square root of 10 and then put minus 3, that's fine. I just like it. Personally, I like that. Can I break down square root of 10? No, so there you go. Every single time we do the same thing. <clears throat> the only time it gets harder is when you have to use fractions, but it has nothing to do with Algebra 2. <laughs> Cannot impress upon you enough, guys, those Algebra 1 skills, we've got to get them strong because everything that we do from now on is going to be an Algebra 2 skill. And then the next step after that is going to all rely on Algebra 1. So we just got to keep practicing. So let's look at 3. My, yes, sir? you do the D We'll get there in a minute. If you want to go ahead, that's fine and try, but wait till I explain it. So look at number three. Is my A term one? Yes. Okay. So I'm good to go. What do I do with negative five? I add it over. So I have X squared plus 2X plus my big square 
equals positive five plus the big square. Now, every single time we do the exact same thing. We take that B coefficient, we say two divided by two gives me what? One, all right? So my binomial on the left says what? X plus one, perfect. If it was a minus, it would say X minus one, that's it. And now what do I do with one before I put it in the square? Well, hold on, what do I have to do with it first? I gotta square it. It actually it stays one, I know, but what you do to one side, you do where? To the other, perfect, we're always fair. So five plus one is six. Now this becomes a problem that we've done a bunch of times. What do I do to both sides? Take the square root, good. What goes in front of my plus or my, uh, what goes in front of my root six? Plus or minus. And then what's my last step? Subtract one. Can I combine those two? Can I combine negative one and root six? Yes or no? Can I add them or subtract them together? No, I just rewrite it. Negative one plus or minus the square root of six. That doesn't become square root of five and square root of seven. You can only combine if they're like terms. Those are not like terms. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions? All right, let me answer Dylan's question. Go to number four. Okay, right when you guys start to get the hang of it, we're like, whoop, throw in a curveball. Okay, is my A term one? Yes. yes, okay, so then what do I do with 12? I don't add it. I'm going to subtract it. So I have x squared plus 7x plus my square equals negative 12 plus my square. So now my b term is odd. All right. Does the process change? Nope. Take the 7 and divide by 2. Does 7 divide by 2 pretty? No. Okay, that's fine. So what goes in my parenthesis? x plus what? 7 over 2. Just leave it. You don't have to write it any other way. Just leave it. And now I have to do what with 7 over 2? Square it. So what is 7 over 2 squared? 49 over 4, guys. That 2 goes to the top and to the bottom. What you add on one side, you add where? To the other. 49 over 4. All right. Math doesn't change. So on the right-hand side... I have negative 12 over 1 <clears throat> plus 49 over 4. How do I add those two fractions together? Common denominator. What's the common denominator between 1 and 4? What you do to the bottom, you do where? To the top. What's negative 12 times 4? Negative 48. Okay, so what's negative 48 plus 49? Not, that's not a trick question. What's negative 48 plus 49? 1, so I have 1 over 4, negative or positive? What? I changed 12 over 1 to a common denominator of fourths. So I multiplied the 1 by 4, so I multiplied the top by 4. Oh. Yeah. So I get 1 fourth. Oh, sorry, I forgot the square here. Now what do I do to both sides? Take the square root, okay. So I have x plus 7 over 2 equals what goes in front of my square root, plus or minus. Guys, what's the square root of 1? 1. What's the square root of 4? Okay. And then what's my last step? So I'm going to subtract 7 over 2. So minus 7 over 2. So x equals, guys, how many answers do I have here? 2. I have positive 1 half minus 7 over 2. And I have negative 1 half minus 7 over 2. If you can simplify and combine, you need to. What's 1 minus 7? So negative 6 over 2 becomes negative 3. And then I have negative 1 minus 7, which is negative 8 over 2, which becomes negative 4. All right, so you got two pretty whole numbers. Because all, all you're doing right here is just adding two numbers together. You're just simplifying that side. You're just adding two numbers together. Wait a second. Let me just finish. 
Guys, what do you notice about these two answers in comparison to the other ones that we got? Well, what were the, the first three answers we got had what in them? They had square roots. This one just came up with nice, pretty whole numbers. Do you know what that tells you about your original problem? What are factors of 12 that multiply to give you 12 but add to give you 7? X minus 3 and X minus 4? Plus 3 and plus 4? Tell me. Plus 3 minus 4, what is it? Does this factor from the beginning? Yes. When you guys have a problem that is a quadratic, if all it does is say is solve, try to factor first. If it asks you to solve by completing the square, then you need to show all of this work. But the first thing I would do on the ones that just say solve is I would try to factor first. If it doesn't, then yes, you can complete the square. If, it, if this was the problem that said solve by completing the square, then you would have had to do all this. But if it just says solve and it factors, do it that way. Dylan. Well, if you factor, it would have been x plus 3, x plus 4. Right, and then when you solve it, x plus 3 equals 0, so you get x equals negative 3. Yeah. And x plus 4, which is exactly what we got here. Yeah, but then you negative 4. The answer is negative 3 and negative 4. You have to, yes, because, you, like, if something factors, great. If it doesn't, you have to know what to do in that case. Like, the first three didn't factor. So you had to know, oh, then I can solve it. You can't just say it, you can't solve it. You have to figure out a way to solve it. But if it just says solve on your quiz or your test and it factors, do it that way. It's the easiest. But this lesson is completing the square. 90% of them are going to have radicals in it. Yeah. You take the, the B term, which is 7, and you always divide the B term by 2. That's how you get what goes in the parenthesis here. That's the, the process. And then to see what goes in each square is you have to square what you get there. Every single time. Okay, so it's, it's two answers when, when, when the highest exponent is 2, you're always going to have two answers. When the highest exponent in your equation is 2, do you see how it's x squared? Your original problem says x squared? Yeah. You're always going to have two answers. The highest exponent of an equation tells you how many answers you'll have. Oh, okay. All right, let's look at, let's look at 5. Yeah. You can separate if you want to, but you don't have to. Web assign just makes you separate. Yeah. How I got where? When you add negative 48 over 4 plus 49 over 4, what's negative 48 plus 49? Just 1 over 4? I change this to a common denominator. The common denominator would be 4. So I change this to a 4, and what you multiply to the bottom, 1 times 4, I multiply to the top. All right, let's look at the next one. Is your A term 1? Yes, okay. So that means I need to move my constant over, because this one does not factor, and it doesn't matter whether it factors or not, because it says solve by completing the square. So you have x squared minus 3x plus a square equals, when I move negative 6 to the other side, what does it become? Positive, good, and then you have plus your square. So now we're going to do the same thing we've done in the last four. Take the B term, it's negative 3, and you divide it by 2. You always divide by 2. So what is going to go in my parentheses down here? X minus 3 over 2. You guys are telling yourself exactly what goes in there by taking the B term and dividing by 2. Now, how do you figure out what goes in each little square? What do you do with that number? You square it. So what goes in each square? 9 over 4. 9 over 4. What you do to one side, you do to the other. Everybody with me? Okay, so now, guys, look. You're adding fractions. This has nothing to do with Algebra 2. 
We have to be able to work with fractions. If this is confusing anyone, look, I'll write six over one plus nine over four. What is a common denominator between one and four? Four, okay, so nine fourth stays. How did I get from one to four? Multiply by four, what you do to the top, you do where? To the bottom, what you do to the bottom, you do to the where? Top, all right. So I have 24 plus nine gives me 33 over what? Okay. Now this is the same problem we did last week. What do I do to both sides? Take the square root. Okay. So X minus three over two equals what goes in front of my answer? Plus or minus. Does anybody know the square root of 33 off the top of your head? No. Square root of 33. What is the square root of four? Two. And then what's your last step? Yep, add the 3 over 2. So x equals, I like to write the number first, plus or minus the square root of 33 over 2. Somebody last period said, is it okay if I write it like this? Yes, because it's the same denominator. Either way is fine. does not matter to me. WebAssign wants it separated, and they want 3 over 2 plus root 33 over 2, 3 over 2 minus root 3 over 32. All right, let's look at six. How's six a little different? There's a coefficient, okay? There's one extra step here. There's a coefficient in front of x squared. You actually can do complete the square and the coefficient's not one, that's fine. But for our purposes right now, we're going to take that a term and just divide everything by it. We want our a term to be one. So this becomes, rewrite your new problem, x squared minus, what's 12 over nine become? 4 over 3, perfect, minus 1 over 9 equals 0. Those of you who like to skip steps and do all this stuff in your head, you're going to be lost when you, when you come to me and ask me, I don't know how to do this, and I, I'm going to say, where? Show me your work. And you're like, oh, I don't know where I put what. Don't do that. Write everything down. Don't skip steps. Okay, so is my A term now 1? Yes, so I'm going to say x squared minus 4 over 3x. What do I do with that negative 1 ninth? We're going to add it to the other side. Perfect. So I have plus my big box equals 1 over 9 plus the big box. Everything is exactly the same. Now you're dealing with a fraction. No big deal. You guys are going to deal with fractions from now to the end of your math career. Take your b term. It's negative 4 over 3, and I divide it by 2 over 1. Do you have to write the one underneath? No, I think it's a good idea to remind yourself because what are we doing with fractions? We're keep, change, and then flip. Yep. You're divide, you always divide the B term by two. I just put two over one because you're gonna have to keep, change, flip. So this becomes what? Negative two thirds. Perfect, Priscilla. So what's going to go in my parenthesis here? X minus two-thirds, and it's squared, equals, what do I do with negative two-thirds? You don't add it. What do we have to do first? We have to square it. So what goes in the box? What's negative two-thirds squared, guys? Okay, four over nine. And what? 4 over 9, what you do to one side, you do to the other. So what's 1 ninth plus 4 ninths? 5 ninths. The hard part of this problem is not anything with completing the square. It's because now you guys have fractions. So we need to practice that. Now that I have <clears throat> one binomial squared on one side equal to a number, what do I do? Take the square root. Good. So I have x minus 2 thirds equals, what goes in front of that square root? Plus or minus, perfect. Square root of 5? Square root of 5? Yeah? No? What do we write? Square root of 5, perfect. Over what? 3. And then what's your last step? Perfect. Add the 2 thirds. So x equals 2 thirds plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. You want to write it all together, that's fine. 2 plus or minus root 5 over 3. 
like this, two plus minus square root of five over three. One sec, Alec. Either one. Yes, sir. The first one's the coefficient of A was one. Look at, look at questions one, two, three, and four. What's the number in front of X squared? It's a one. Same with five. You got it? All right, guys, let's do these last few and then we're done. Your homework tonight is to start to start the web assign. Don't come in here tomorrow and be like, oh, I'm just going to work on the webs. I need you guys to start it tonight so you come in here with questions because our class period is shortened on Wednesday because of mass. Your quiz is on Thursday, so we want to get through all this today so we can practice tomorrow and practice on Wednesday. So let's look at this. How is this set up? What do you notice about your A term? There is a coefficient that's not 1, so what do I do with that? Uh, perfect. Good job. So I'm going to divide everything by 3. So I have x squared minus 4 over 3x minus 1 third equals 0. Are we good to go now? We can get going. What do I do with that minus 1 third? Add it. So x squared minus 4 over 3x plus a big old square equals 1 third plus a big old square. Next step. Divide what by two? Perfect, negative four over three divided by, look guys, I'm gonna put two over one, just so we don't forget. Cause I have to keep, change, flip. What is negative four thirds times one half become? Negative four over six, which is negative two thirds. Okay. So what goes in my binomial? X minus two thirds squared. And then I have to square this and it's got to go to each box. So what goes in each box? Square it. Four over nine and four over nine. Now I have to combine like terms, or I have to combine. They're like terms because they're both numbers, but one third plus four ninths. What do I have to get first? Common denominator. What's my common denominator between three and nine? Nine. So look guys, I'm gonna multiply three times nine. I'm sorry, three times three to get nine, right? What you do to the bottom, you do where? To the top, so one times three is three. Everybody see how I just did that work inside the problem? So what's three ninths plus four ninths? Seven ninths, great. And now let's continue to solve. What do I do to both sides? Take the square root, perfect. So x minus two thirds equals, what goes first? What goes first? What goes first? Plus or minus, square root of seven over three. Last step, add the two thirds. You do the exact same thing, guys, every single time. The part that gets a little hairy is it's not always just pretty whole numbers. You're gonna have to work with fractions. You're gonna have to work with radicals. Yeah. How'd I get where? When you start off the problem, if your A term is not one, you have to divide every term by the A term. When you square negative two thirds, negative two squared is four and then three squared is nine. Remember guys, when, you, when any number you put in that box should be positive because when you square a number, it becomes what? Positive, right? Let's go through the last two. <clears throat> my a term is not one, so I'm gonna divide everything by five. So I have x squared minus seven over five x minus one fifth equals zero. Walk me through it, what do I do? Add one fifth, perfect. So I have x squared minus seven over five x plus a big square 
equals one fifth plus the big square. Nothing to every single time we do the exact same thing. How do I figure out what's gonna go in my binomial? I'm gonna take my B term, perfect, which is negative seven over five, and I divide it by what? Two, which is two over one. Since I'm dividing fractions, I have to keep, change, flip. So what does this become? Negative 7 over 10. Perfect. So what is in my binomial here? Perfect, Jaden. X minus 7 over 10 squared equals. Now how do we figure out what goes in each square? You got to square that. So what does that become? Perfect. 49 over 100. What you do to one side, you do to the other. Now, before I can finish, I have to add 1 fifth and 49 over 100. So I have to get a common denominator. What's a common denominator between 1 fifth and 49 over 100? 100. What do you multiply the 5 by to make it 100? 20. So when I multiply the bottom by 20, I multiply the top by 20. What's 20 times 1? What's 20 times 1? 20. Thank you. So now can I add those two fractions? Yes. What do I get? 69 over 100. Wonderful. Now, guys, we're going to do the exact same thing we've done nine other times. What do I do? Take the square root. Perfect. So x minus 7 over 10 equals plus or minus. Wonderful. Plus or minus what? Not 69. Square root, good, of 69 over. Perfect. And then your last step. Plus 7 over 10. So x equals 7 over 10 plus or minus the square root of 69 over 10. Good job. What do you think you should do with the last one? Take out the negative 1. Right, we're going to divide out a negative 1. Guys, think about this. We're factoring and we divide out negative 1. That becomes out in front. What are you going to do at the end? You're going to say negative 1 equals 0, right? Yeah. Right? Does that negative 1? Anytime you have the GCF, you take it out in front, right? Is that equal to 0? Does negative 1 ever equal 0? No. So you, what you've done, you've divided the entire problem. Left-hand side, right-hand side by negative 1. So it's not there anymore. You're good. So it's x squared minus 3x Minus 5 equals 0. Last period, like, well, what about the negative 1? Do I have to have it in my answer? No, you divided both the left-hand side and the right-hand side by negative 1. You don't account for it. It's done. So this is a problem that we did starting with what? Number 4 or 5? I have 1 as my x squared coefficient, so I just take my b term. It just happens to be that it's not even. But what do I do with negative 3? Divided by 2. Good. So what does my binomial look like over here? Thank you, sir. X minus 3 over 2, and that's squared. Equals. How do I figure? Oh, I forgot to. Sorry. I'm skipping steps, and I tell you guys not to. How do I figure out what goes in each little square? Square the fraction. So it's 9 over 4 and 9 over 4. So before I can go ahead and solve, I have to get a common denominator and combine those two. What's my common denominator between? Thank you. So I have to multiply the bottom by 4, then I multiply the top by 4, and I get 20. So 20 plus 9. Perfect. 29 over 4. And then what? Take the square root. Perfect. So I have x minus 3 over 2 equals plus or minus square root of 29 over 2. Last step. Perfect. Plus 3 over 2. So x equals 3 over 2 plus or minus square root of 29 over 2. You absolutely will have one of those 
out of your 10 questions <clears throat> on your quiz. So if you're going to say, I can't do this, I'm not, I can't complete the square, I don't know how to do it. The highest you could possibly get on your quiz then is a 90. You will see it again on the test. After that, completing the square is just another method for you guys to solve quadratics. But what you guys need to do tonight is you need to open up WebAssign. You need to go through it. You need to practice any questions you have in class tomorrow. Hey, I couldn't get this one. I got stuck on this one. We'll go over it. I'll provide you practice problems for the quiz. And then we'll practice a little more on Wednesday. Everybody good? All right. Thank you very much.